up you guys it's michelle so for today's video i'm making something called heart attack nachos i did not come up with that name there's a place next to me that sells these that name them that i'm pretty much just copying the way that they do it except i'm adding a couple extra things also since i'm going to be doing the story time about my ex-boyfriend in this video i thought i should make myself a little drink a little alcoholic beverage so i'm gonna be making that as well and yeah i know this is a lot like what i made last week i try not to make videos that are so similar so close together but honestly i woke up this morning and i wanted to eat this today so that's what we're eating so yeah let's get started so for the base of the nachos they do not use just regular tortilla chips they use doritos and the youtube favorite hot cheetos so that's what i'm going to be using i'm using spicy nacho doritos because i like these the most then hot cheetos to this i'm going to be adding some queso i know i use queso in 90 percent of my videos i just really like queso so i'm going to put that i warmed it up and put it back in the container so it's nice and hot this is the target brand queso i've never tried this one before so i'm gonna try this out it has that nice skin on top that's always a good sign Mmm. <laughs> I swear I'm gonna do a healthy video someday soon. Just not today. Then we've got some seasoned ground beef. It smells like Taco Bell in this bitch. Jalapenos. <gasps> the best nachos I've ever had at Dodger Stadium. They sell these nachos called elote nachos so it's like street corn nachos oh my gosh they're so good i should try and recreate some for a video i'm gonna add some tomato now mm -mm 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 -mm. i'm gonna add some chives again because as we know greens equal health and this channel is all about health the last thing i'm gonna add is some sour cream i found this really cool cilantro lime Did you guys just see that? What is happening with the sour cream right now? Why is it jizzling everywhere? Oh my god! It got all over my bed sheets. I literally just washed those yesterday. Shucks. Well, anyway, let's continue. Cilantro lime sour cream. This better taste good or that was not worth it. I forgot my Diet Coke. I'll be back in two seconds. Don't leave. First, let me make my cocktail really fast. So I have some ice. I'm going to start off with some orange juice. So some leftover tequila from my last drinking video. I don't know how much to add. That was the rest of it. Okay. I'm going to squeeze in some lime. I'm adding some strawberries for cuteness, because that's always important. Grenadine. Look how pretty. It looks like it's bleeding. And for the garnish, I'm just going to add this orange. Look how cute that is. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Needs a little bit more lime. It's like really strong, but it's also really sugary, so <laughs> it's dangerous. Mmm. You guys. I feel like some of you watching this might think that this looks horrific. This is so freaking good. Using Doritos as the chips is like genius. Mm. This is truly revolutionary. Mmm. Hot Cheetos with cheese, you guys already know. Is like my number one favorite junk food. I'm gonna try this sour cream to see if it was worth me having to rewash my sheets again today. Oh god. Mmm. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more. Oh my god. This is banging, you guys. Someone just sent me an email saying that they wanted me to do a video where I eat something and I let the food get on the side of my mouth, but that I specifically do not wipe off the food. I hate the feeling of having food on my face, so I don't think I would do that anyway, but I get some very interesting messages from you guys. Mmm. Ah, I need to drink a little bit more before I get started into this story. <laughs> I mentioned in one of my last videos that I lived with an ex-boyfriend and then one of the top comments was asking me basically to explain what happened, how we met, why we moved in together, and why we broke up. So that's what I'm going to be going over in this video. It happened so long ago. It happened like five years ago. And I have not seen or talked to this person since, so it feels really weird bringing this all up again. But... The story has been requested for months and months and months, so I'm finally going to tell it. It's not a very positive story, but maybe it'll help some of you guys that are stuck in crappy relationships. I don't know, probably not. This queso is really good. Mm, I'm gonna start on my story now. Keep in mind, this was my first relationship that I've ever been in. I'd never even dated someone casually before this. This is the first person that I dated ever. So. It's a little bit almost embarrassing telling this story and knowing that I stayed in such a crappy relationship for so long, but it's the reality of it. And this relationship, even though it was awful, it taught me so much that I'm actually really glad that it was my first dating experience because I've learned what I'm looking for in someone and I've learned what kind of red flags and stuff to look out for. So there's always positives even to the crappiest of relationships. So it's a good experience. Also, everything that I'm about to tell you about this relationship, this all happened, started and ended within a year, which is not bad at all. I know a lot of people get stuck in really bad relationships for a really long time, like three, four, five years plus. So that's another thing that I'm grateful for. It did not take up that many years of my life. And again, I learned so much from it. But yeah, this was only like a one year long relationship. So at the time it felt like a huge deal, but it really was not. And a year relationship is not that long. This sour cream is really good. They also had a chipotle sour cream, but I thought this one would work better on this. And it does. Mm. I'm so happy with this meal. Okay, so uh, I'm like trying to think, should I keep this story very general? Or should I go into details? I will have to say, I've learned now. So I've only dated two guys seriously. The one I'm about to tell you about, and then I dated a guy after him for like two years. Both of those guys were such picky eaters. Like they hated everything. They hated all food. This guy that I'm about to tell you about, he expected me to cook for him, which was one of our issues. But, oh my god, not only was he so picky, but he had the lowest spice tolerance that I've known from anyone in my entire life. 
I remember one time I made him chicken and I used lemon pepper seasoning, which is literally just lemon with black pepper. And he said that it was too spicy. So, I mean, I should have known right then and there that it was not gonna work. That should be like one of my first questions that I ask on every first date is like, do you have any dietary restrictions? Are you a little bitch when it comes to spicy food? I mean, I'm not really great with spicy food, but like black pepper, come on. Anyway, I just had to get that off my chest because I was thinking back on it and that really bothered me. <laughs> So I met my ex-boyfriend at actually a YouTube event. He was not really a YouTuber, but he was friends with a lot of YouTubers. And I met him at this party thing. Anyway, from the very beginning, I was really not interested. I was not attracted to him. He was very, like, quiet and mousy and kind of annoying, I thought at first. But he was very persistent. And he and I had a bunch of mutual friends, so I started seeing him more and more. After about a month, I started really liking him and we started dating and after about I think maybe six to eight weeks he asked me to be his girlfriend so I said yes at the time I lived near Santa Monica and he lived in Hollywood which is only like less than 15 miles away from each other but it's pretty much like a long distance relationship here in LA it takes so long I think without traffic it's probably like a 30 minute drive, but with traffic it can be close to like a 2 hour drive. But he would always drive out to me, I would drive out to him. For the first few months it was going really really well. This is so banging, oh my god. After about three or four months of us dating, which is not very long at all, I think it was like four months, um, I found out that my roommate was moving out, and he found out that his roommate was moving out. At that point, things were going so well that we decided that we should move in together. <laughs> After only four months of dating, I had no idea what a big deal moving in with someone is. Oh, God. Do not move in with anyone unless you are very, very serious and like think you're about to marry them because it is really not good to start getting involved in like legal documents and leases and bills and stuff like that. Like, are you going to be living with this person for the rest of your life or not? Nah? <laughs> anyway, we moved in together and pretty much immediately I think we realized that we were not a great match. He worked for the show called The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, which is like a dating show. But at the time that I moved in, they weren't shooting, so he was kind of just doing random odd jobs. He was pretty much unemployed. And I was about to start a new job. So the first like month or so that I lived with him, neither of us were really working at all. So we were just around each other 24-7, which also made it 10 times worse. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm getting that slow-mo vision that I get when I've been drinking. <gasps> so yeah, for the first month I think we realized that we actually would get annoyed with each other very easily. We would start fighting almost every single day. It's just such a big change to go from seeing someone once a week for a couple hours to 24-7 is a huge change. Anyway. Mmm. Hmm. He had started working on The Bachelor or something, so they filmed for like six to eight weeks straight. So for like two months, we didn't really see that much of each other, so that made things kind of better. We were having our own time and our own space. I feel like this is getting really into detail, but it is kind of an important part of the story. So, if you guys haven't watched the show before, which I don't watch the show, but I know that they've been doing this for like the last 10 years. They film in this one house. They've been using this same house for like 10 years, I think. It's in LA. In between the shows, they have like a couple months of a gap where the house isn't being used. It's kind of just sitting there empty. And because so many people know where the house is, 
and I think if you Google it, like the house address pops up right away. Naturally, they have a lot of crazy fans that try and go there and hop the fence and break into the house and stuff. So in between when they're not filming in the house, what they would do is they would hire crew people to be like security guards. They just wanted someone to be at the house at all times just to make sure that, you know, people aren't trying to break into it. So for a couple months, they had hired my ex-boyfriend to be one of the security guards for that house. He had the night shift, I remember, so he would be there from like 7 p.m. until 7 a.m. And he was just sitting at this house by himself. And I remember, you know, everyone has like that gut feeling. Before this point, oh my god, this is such a good bite. I just remember one time feeling like something was off. Oh my gosh. I'm tasting the lime from the sour cream. It is really good. I'm into this. You guys should buy this. It will destroy your entire room and your bed sheets, but it is worth it. Um, I just remember having this gut feeling. Sorry, I always get sidetracked. I remember having this side I remember having this feeling that something was like off. I started getting suspicious. So for the first time ever, this is like, again, this is like six months in, I decided to look through his phone, which I think if you feel the need to look through your partner's phone, there's already an issue there. But I remember feeling suspicious for some reason. And I looked through his phone and I had seen that on the days that he was working at the bachelor house, that he was by himself all night, he had been talking to this girl that I knew he kind of had a history with. He had been talking to her on the phone for like hours, every single night. I also saw that their texts, they had been texting back and forth like every single day, all day. So I kind of freaked out. This girl lived a few hours away so I knew that they weren't like meeting up or anything but talking every single night for hours at a time is like a huge thing. So yeah, when I found that out I kind of immediately stopped trusting him. I actually, I'm so embarrassed to say this but I would actually go to the house with him and hang out with him at work because he was just there by himself. I knew that if I wasn't there with him that he would start talking to this girl on the phone or texting her. So pathetic. I cannot believe that I would do that. I would catch him like weekly talking to this person and he would always say that it was the last time and I think it was a hundred times worse that we lived together because I didn't know where else to go. I didn't have any other friends that I could move in with. It was like, do I live with this guy that I'm dating or do I move in with another random Craigslist person, you know what I mean? So I stuck with him, even though I kept catching him talking to this girl, I was like, I guess they're just only talking through the phone, it's not that bad. So stupid. Mm. I remember it was Christmas time, which he and I had been dating now for almost a year. It had been really bad at that point. Not only was I catching him talking to this girl all the time, but we were also just fighting every day about other stupid stuff. Christmas came around and I remember he went back home to visit and that's also where the girl that I'd caught him talking to was from. I remember before he went on his trip, I was like, please do not see this girl. It's gonna make me feel really shitty. I remember telling him that specifically. And then the first day that he goes back home, he calls me and he tells me that he hung out with that girl by themselves. <laughs> we like broke up on the phone, so then he was back home for like a couple weeks with us broken up with this girl, so God knows what happened there. And then he got back after New Year's. Mm. Oh my God, that was the nastiest bite. He got back about a week after New Year's and I hadn't gone home that year for Christmas so I was just like in our apartment by myself while I knew that he was with that other girl. So he gets back and he like broke down. He was like, I really want to get back together. I talked to her and like we finally had closure. Hold on. He said that they had a huge serious talk and that they had closure finally and that they weren't going to talk anymore. And I believed him, and we were still living together. I still wanted to try and make it work. So we got back together. 
literally you guys the next day that we got back together that he promised me that he was not going to be talking to this girl anymore i caught him texting her <laughs> i just remember catching him texting her and i was just finally done i was like okay well this is obviously not gonna work so i think we should break up so about three weeks later I ended up moving out and moving in with this other girl and yeah those last three weeks that we were still living together but like broken up so awkward like the day after he and I broke up he got back together with that girl and I think he went to go visit her where she lived I just remember my whole being was just like so drained it just sucked because I feel like I worked so hard to be like as committed and loyal as I could be and he just like did not give an F. So yeah, it ended pretty badly for me. <laughs> I'll probably be single forever but it's cool. <laughs> I'm actually leaving out a lot of parts of the story that are a lot more serious because I don't think this video needs to go there but I think you guys can tell that it was a really bad relationship <laughs> with what I've already told you. Mm. Okay. I'm kind of over this. I feel like I ate a very decent amount. Mm. This was really good. Can I show you guys my favorite ice cream? I want to show you guys my favorite ice cream. I'll be right back. Mm. I feel so good right now. I kind of want another drink. I don't have any alcohol though anyways i want to show you guys my current favorite ice cream it's so good it's already melting and i've had it out of the freezer for like two seconds <sighs> okay so this is the haagen dazs peanut butter salted fudge ice cream this ice cream is one of the best store-bought grocery store ice creams that i've ever had please look at her mmm it tastes like those Snickers ice cream bars. You know, the ones that have ice cream in them. Isn't this little spoon so cute? I love this ice cream. I just wanted to show you guys. And give it a shout out. I love when you guys tweet me that you guys have gone out and tried things that I've shown in videos. I can't believe you guys actually listened to me. That's gonna be it you guys thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed be sure to leave me a comment down below on what you think i should eat next week be sure to follow me on instagram and yeah i will see you guys next week bye